Welcome to another Melbourne Cocoa Herds presentation. Recorded at the offices of realestate.com.au on May the 12th, 2011. In this session, Stephen Holloway of realestate.com.au talks about the open-closed principle, one of the solid principles of object-oriented design. Hi, I'm Stephen Holloway. I'm a mobile developer at REA. And um, I'm here to talk about the open closed principle, which is part of um, solid. It's the O in solid, which is the, which I will get to. Now, I was very influenced by Oliver's impressive uh, presentation graphics, so I did a little bit of extra effort here <laughs> tonight. <laughs> There was an epic cocoa heads uh, the last one, so um, I stand under um, under you know full poppies. <laughs> so solid is essentially the mnemonic that um, Bob Martin um, came up with with uh, in his book, which uh, you know pretty important though. This this book talks about those principles. <sighs> <laughs> it was about, was it 2005 I think it was? So Solid spells out the these five principles. Single responsibility principle, open close principle, this cost substitution principle, interface segregation segregation principle and dependency inversion principle. Um, this talk is about number two which is the um, open close principle. So I think this this kind of says it all. <laughs> Keep these in mind. You know you're going to be you're going to write more um, extendable, more manageable, easy to maintain software. And uh, that that's the point. And interestingly enough, like I only found out about these principles um, nine months ago, um, and I'm kind of in a in a um, big learning curve on on on, on recognizing where to apply them. So the open close principle was um, coined by a guy called Bertrand Mayer, and there he is. And it basically says that um, software entities, classes, modules, functions, etc., should be open for extension, but closed for modification. And what he's getting at there is that um, you have a class, you've made this class. You don't want to go back and change the class to add new behaviour to it. it that, that, that's a risk. Um, so if you, if you essentially build a class in a way that um, if you want to change something, um, you, you want to uh, kind of predict the, the potential changes that you're likely to occur, that are likely to occur in your particular business, domain model, etc. And he also went on later to say that he believes that it's kind of the fundamental, um, probably the most important element of, of, of OO. And ultimately, um, what that comes down to... <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Bertram Meyer and Bob Martin, by the way. <laughs> so the idea, it's about, it's about abstraction and about... Um, you, you, if you, you understand the business you're working in, you understand your domain model, um, you can kind of predict what is likely to change within a particular class that you, that you write. Um, and then, I, mean, that's, I mean, that's the crux of it, and that's something that's going to, be come, that's going to come with experience of being an, an object-oriented designer. Now, one of the things, how many people have actually heard about the open-close principle? Only from you. <laughs> it's actually less than I expected, far less than I expected. I expected a few more. So um, I'll just also add that um, Luke and Jesse have been doing a big refactor in our code base at the moment. And they've, they've been hammer and tongs um, making it nice. And these solid principles have been kind of the foundation of what they've been doing. So um, any, any refactoring they're doing, they're obeying these rules. Yep. Did you ask how many of us know the, know the term? In the short, small show of hands. But how many of us are actually using it anyway? That is actually a very good question, and that's, that's, that was actually a point I was going to make later, that you, you are probably, you're probably using it without realising it. So the, 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 whole, the whole idea behind the open-close principle is that it's about abstraction. 
So it's about finding a way to abstract certain parts of your, um, of your code against particular change, not tying implementations to implementations. So it's that whole idea of you, you code to an interface, not an implementation. Right, now I'm going to switch over to Xcode. Right, so I've got an example here, um, which is the classic violating, violating example of um, open close principle. So here, here we have a class that, um, it's called violate for a particular reason. It's, it should be like draw shapes, the draw shapes class. So here we have a, um, a class that knows about square, knows about circle. It, um, it has drawing code in it about how to draw a square, how to draw a circle. And then it's doing this nasty um, type checking at runtime to choose a particular um, method based on the object identity. Um, now this this is not um, this is not closed for extension. If we wanted to add a new shape class and send another uh, shape shape type to this in this array, um, if we wanted to add triangle, we would have to go and change this class. So this is this is the crux of it. This is this is something that is not um, not open. It's not open for extension. Um, to extend it, we have to change the class. However, um, so how many people have had a background in, in Java? <laughs> so quite a few. So a typical, a typically a Java developer would address this problem with, with an abstract, abstract class. Um, there, are, there is something else that you would, you would, or you would use an interface, but we'll get to that. So, in Objective C, you don't have abstract classes, so you you would need to like have an implementation that you would say, right, please don't override this. <laughs> <laughs> and you can do you can do that. And um, the examples that I've seen, um, sorry, wrong. You would make a, a shape a shape class with a method of draw, and then you would have this kind of dirty thing here that would basically say, don't implement this method. You know, it's in the superclass, ignore it. Now, um, while that gets us to the point where we actually, we actually are open-closed, um, it's, it's not the, the Coco or Objective-C way of doing things. So we would actually move on to using a protocol. Now, the, uh, the beauty of this is we have this nice protocol called Shape. Um, so rather than having... Um, I'm missing a class. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, there it is. Yeah. Rather than having a shape class that we inherit from and then have this dodgy thing that you would get for free in, um, in uh, Java, we would use a protocol. So any, any shape object that implements the protocol knows how to draw itself. And then you would have the draw method inside the particular square. So as you can see, I didn't write any um, Core graphics code to actually draw any shapes. You spent too, too much time doing that animation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Way more, way more time. Yeah, it was all for all of a sake. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then you, then you, so then you end up with this really nice, clean way of, of, of dealing with this, and you you deal with you know to this this class, which would be not conform as a protocol. That's just for this example. It would be like a draw shapes class. Um, be responsible for rendering shapes. It, um, it looks for shapes that know um, that they implement that particular protocol, and that way you're leaving it op um, you're leaving it open to um, new shapes to implementing that protocol. And, it, and that is then that is the crux of, of what open open close is about. And um, this while this it can be can be seen as like a type check, I think that's actually quite nice because it. You're not looking at particular classes. You're looking at particular um, what was it uh, interfaces, and if they all respond to a common interface, everything's good. So, additionally, something that I recently found is that um, um, 
And it's pretty good. The classic one for um, if you've got like a, con uh, a collection of, of like um, conditions that you're trying to check, you could manage those externally from your class. So I just found this one. So this is a, this. I haven't written an example yet, but um, um, that's another another great tool within uh, within Objective C that we can use to, or within the foundation framework, we can use to apply the open close principle. Rather than having a whole load of if statements in your code that are checking particular strings, you can keep those external to that class and pass them in as you need, and um, and, and put them in the appropriate places. So I think that's a that's a nice one, and that's actually you can see that in the um, uh, learning Objective C on the Mac, which is an APRES book. Categories are another example. So where you might not, you might you might find a class that doesn't that the designer didn't think about the open close principle. You can you can add behaviour to a class without changing the class. So while that may not be the open close principle in practice. It's a way of getting around it. If you know you had a poor, it was a you're dealing with a poorly designed class. Um, any questions? Comments, more than Christian. Yep, comments. Um, yes. The, the classic example of open close principle in in um, all of the Cocoa frameworks is the delegate pattern, mm -hmm. where you have yep. things like UI application, which you don't extend. You have delegate, which is calling out to you to influence the behavior or to respond to events in the life cycle of the application. Um, like the, any example or any class which is essentially providing a framework within which you mm. can extend it and modify yes. its behavior yeah. without you having to change mm. its um, internal structure. Is, is an example of that's right. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's a whole there's a whole series of. Um, I mean, I think the um, the draw thing. I think would have if you'd have seen the implementation of the code, probably would have done something similar to that. Um, but yeah, the delegate pattern is a, is a, another good example. Um, I actually did have an example that's not finished that <laughs> I wanted to show, but I'm not showing. So um, and, and now with Objective C um, two and blocks. Um, Oh, there's another so, yeah. it's like, blocks. Yeah, blocks is another caveat which I haven't haven't got to yet, but yeah, um, it, it will be there. Believe believe me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think I think uh, Jesse and Luke uh, wrote, wrote more blocks um, in Objective C than they've ever written in the last week. So <laughs> stay tuned for that one. <laughs> so some further some further reading. So um, the, the guy who wrote this, Bob Martin, you can get all the articles, which are essentially pretty much the chapters in that book on all the, all the solid principles. They're available at the Object Mentor site. Um, I found them very valuable. Um, the other thing that is is really important to note is that while you apply um, something like um, a, a open close principle, you need to keep, take in mind the other principles as well and make sure you're not violating those by <laughs> trying to make something more open. And of course, you don't want to be completely open you need, you need to be, it, it's, it's strategic. You need to make a strategic decision about what is the, um, what are the things that you need to be closed against? What changes do you need to be closed against? I mean, I mean to me, that, that is the crux of the principle. And that's it. Many thanks to Stephen Holloway for presenting this month. Thanks also to realestate.com.au for hosting this month's event. You can download the realestate.com.au app from the iTunes App Store. If you would like to know more about Melbourne Cocoa Heads, visit us on the web at melbournecocoaheads.com or follow Melbourne Cocoa on Twitter. <laughs>